Hi everyone, I'm Mike. This is the Sunday Art Show and if you've been watching the channel for a little while you may remember that I was lucky enough to take part in Sky Arts Landscape Artist of the Year back in 2019 as a wildcard artist and I had a great day, decided to apply again this year. I didn't get in as one of the main pod artists but I was invited once again to apply to be a wildcard artist so I was pretty excited about doing that again because I had a fantastic time the first time around. However, when I got the email for um, details on applying to be a wildcard, because of COVID-19, we'd just come out of the first lockdown here in the UK, they said please do not apply if you live more than a two hour drive from your filming location. And I'm not going to give away any of the future locations they're going to use in this series, no, no spoilers. But suffice to say that living in Exeter, all of the possible locations were more than two hours away. So I decided to, you know, better safe than sorry. Um, and I decided not to apply and I hope to apply again uh, in a few months time, actually, for the for the next season. Anyway, one of the really cool things that Sky did during the first lockdown in the UK was Portrait Artist of the Week. This is the first season that they did. And at the end of that, um, you know, quite a few people were kind of chatting, you know, hey, you guys should do a Landscape Artist of the Week. And I even put that idea to some of the production team in a, in a Zoom meeting. Um, but it looks like they haven't decided to go ahead with that, at least not just yet. So I thought I'd kind of do my own version just for a bit of fun. So this week we're at Chartwell House and I'm going to do a watercolour study of this uh, beautiful, unique building using Windsor & Newton watercolours and some Langton A2 watercolour paper. So let's get going. So I'm starting out with some A2 Langton watercolour paper. And I'm just going to begin by lightly misting the surface of the paper with my water spray bottle. And then I've got my palette here. I've got a big uh, synthetic brush, mop brush. And I'm just going to pick up some Silurian Blue. Now you can see I've got some paint from previous paintings uh, in the central well. And, and that's OK. You know, I'll mix that in with the Silurian Blue. Let's get a little bit more of that. So it's going to be a fairly kind of dirty blue wash that I'm going to put down initially. But let's get a little bit of colour introduced to the, the top of the painting here. So I haven't done any pencil work at all. My paper, I don't know if you can tell from the camera, but it's tipped back from the vertical by around about 30 degrees. So it's a fairly steep angle compared to what uh, I sometimes use for watercolour. But that's going to allow the paint to just kind of run down the, the paper fairly easily. Now, I'm just going to use this colour to begin to map out very, very loosely some of the lines of the house here. Now it's quite a complicated structure so I'm just going to treat it in a very simple way. So we've got roughly a V there and then the, the wing of the house comes out this way and then we've got some bushes along here as well. And then what I'm going to do while that's still wet is with a clean brush I'm just going to lift out some paint here Oops. and perhaps a little bit more so I very very simply started to indicate where the building is and having done that 
Now the building itself is fairly light. Um, it's surrounded by some foliage on the left. So I'm just going to suggest the end of the building there. And uh, there's a wall in front of the building, which is fairly light as well. So we'll leave that blank for the moment. This area is fairly dark, so we'll just put a little bit of darkness in there. There's a dark area down here with the plants. And then much of the foreground is reasonably dark as well. So a very, very simple treatment to start off with. Now the building itself, I've got cleaned out my central well on the pallet here. Same big mop brush. I've got some, some dried cad yellow from an earlier painting. So let's um, grab some of that and then just a touch of alizarin crimson, just a small amount. Probably too much that I've added there. It's quite a powerful uh, pigment, but actually that hasn't turned out too bad. So again, it's a very weak wash. And what I'm going to do is I'm just squinting at the, the building. And again, I'm just very loosely beginning to suggest where this building is. So if I go over some of that blue of the sky that I put in, um, then that's okay at this stage. Starting to be a little more precise now up the top here with this rather wonderful kind of cornered pitched roof that's uh, go going on. And there's a little turret there which I'll have to put in later, but that's, uh, that's okay. Uh, now the, the left hand wing of the building is coming out here. There's a chimney about here. And then there's this wonderful kind of end piece to the building as well. Let's put in some of that same colour down here, just a little bit, and a little bit over there too. Now, while that paint is still damp, I've just grabbed some more of the cadmium yellow, taking a little touch of the alizarin again. But now I've got a darker version of the colour that I've just used. So I'm going to use this to begin to draw a little bit more precisely. So I'm squinting again at my reference. So the roof is somewhat darker there. And these runs that are going on, I'm not concerned about that at all, really, um, but actually I will just block in that area as well. So there's a darker roof there, a bit of a chimney here. There's a bit of a chimney there. There's a line of a roof coming up here and then down there. And then this part of the roof is somewhat darker. And then There's the other, that lovely corner piece I mentioned before. Roof comes down here, then this wall here is darker than the other areas. And then the roof, still the darker colour, extends out this way, but the bottom of that roof starts about there. There are the chimneys again that I mentioned earlier. This, this left hand side of the chimneys is somewhat darker. There's a roof coming out here. And then again, we've got this corner piece, which I'm not going to touch too much at the moment. But I can just begin to suggest the bit of the building which is protruding out from the left side. So let's lose that little uh, run there. And quite like the way this is behaving at the moment, but I'll just kind of blitz through that little trickle that I had a second ago. Now I've just put some pure alizarin on my brush and mixed it into what I had left in the central well. And I'm just going to tap some of that into the foreground to begin to block in some of the plant life that we've got there. And even though there's a green bush here, I'm going to put some of that same colour in there 
add a little bit here on the right and even a bit here actually and then I'll just use my water spray to loosen that one on the left up a little bit perhaps a blitz in the front and the one on the right I'm, I'm okay with at the moment still with the same big brush back in with the yellow but this time I'm going to add some of the Silurian blue. It's got a little bit more. I've got a fairly mild green there. And let's begin to put some plant life in. Now the wall coming down here, there's, there's kind of a stepped nature to it. I don't want to get into that in too much detail at the moment, but we can begin to suggest that. There's some further plant life in the foreground. And here on the left as well. So you can see I'm being incredibly loose at the moment. Now there's a tree kind of sticking out from behind the top of the house there, but I'm going to ignore that. OK, so I'm going to let that dry now. But on second thoughts, actually, I think this can stand a little bit more wet in wet action. So I'm actually going to grab some um, some ultramarine blue. Some of the yellow. So now I've got a darker green, still a, still a weak, you know, watery wash. And let's put some of that in on the right hand side where we've got this very very dark tree um, we can put in some here in that in the foreground foliage put in a bit here as well and some on the left And then what I'll do is I've still got a bit of that in the central well, but I'm going to grab some of the alizarin and mix that into that pale green I've got there. Let's get a bit more of that. And some of the yellow. There we go. So now I've got a little bit of a bolder kind of reddish brown colour. And let's use some of that on the house. You know, so th things are still pretty wet, but I can just kind of dark and key areas and begin to establish this building peeking out from the, the trees so it's a little more brown than I would like to be honest it's uh, I wanted a bit more red really let's put a bit more alizarin in there So you can see I'm not concerning myself with architectural details at the moment. Fairly broad and sweeping brush strokes. Let's add a little bit more water to that same mixture. And let's perhaps lift out a little bit of that. A little bit there. off a bit with my finger and this end wall is a little darker than I've got it um, I, may have got, I should have gone a bit more purple there perhaps so let's grab some of the alizarin not the alizarin the silurian sorry and then within that color that I just put down I'm going to lift out a patch there and also perhaps actually perhaps just lift out quite a bit of that for the moment and then I need a bit of green in here at some point but I think I'll, I'll leave that for now so hopefully you can see 
the building is starting to emerge in three dimensions in amongst this rather abstract, wishy-washy, colours melting together uh, situation. So I'm going to I am going to let that dry now and then we'll come back in a little bit. All right, well, much of this is reasonably dry now. You can see I've got a few kind of cauliflowers forming and stuff. Uh, I don't mind at all. I think it adds some interesting texture uh, to the situation, basically. I've still got a few beads of colour here which have yet to dry, but I want to get going on this. So what I'm going to do is just use some clean paper towel to lift off those beads of, of paint which are still kind of uh, there on the page. So when I finish doing that, I'll come back. So a lot of people, they do they do a line drawing and then they do their washes of watercolour. I often do what I've done here. I bang in some watercolour washes and then I do my drawing stage. So I've got a couple of biros here, ballpoint pens. I've just got a dark blue and a lighter kind of blue. Um, and I'm going to use those to start to do some drawing. Now, what I'm going to do is the minimum drawing that I feel I can get away with. So I'm going to correct where I need to. But, you know, if, if the paint has kind of done the job for me, then then that's OK. So the angle of this part of the roof is pretty good. It's not spot on, but it's not too bad. This bit's better than the top. So so let's um, let's correct that. Let's just put a little line in there. And then as I come down to about here, well, actually, the roof I, I painted in here, that should start higher up. That should be up about here. So let's put that line in there. And then about here, I started to put in the chimney, but I didn't do a particularly great job. So there's a chimney there. And top of the chimney's there. So notice I'm not really even doing complete lines. They're just kind of guides, really. Now, at this stage, um, or this section of the roof, there's another little chimney popping out. So it's quite a complicated roof line. I started to put that in. So I'm going to use the edge of that wash that I had before as my little line. And I'll just add the rest of the chimney in as well. Now, I'm just going to uh, measure the angle on my reference. which I, The angle there of the roof isn't too bad. It should be, it should stop somewhat higher up than I've got it though. Okay, so what I should have done is stopped it about there. So let's correct that as well. And then that part of the roof I'm reasonably happy with. Hadn't put the turret in at all, so let's do that. Without you know, getting too involved, whoops, excuse me, that's just not the camera there. Without getting too involved in detail, I've just put the turret, turret in, it's in the right spot now. Um, there's some more of that showing down there, we won't worry about that. That part of the roof I'm not too displeased with, so that's okay. I can switch to my darker colour now. And I quite like that line that's kind of happened automatically with the wash. But let's... Um, Put in a line for the roof there and one coming down here and again this continues down quite a lot lower there's a line in the building about here this this line between the dark and the light of the wash it might not be perfect but i quite like it so i'm going to leave that for the moment now this area here where it's kind of the washes have misted together again that's not really exactly how it is but again i quite like it I also quite like the auto texture that's been created there. I'm going to put in a darker shadow with paint later, so that some of that may get hidden. I'm going to have to live with it if it happens, but I'm going to leave it for now. But this part of the roof here, I do want to just pick out where it kind of comes in a little higher compared to that roof line. All of this is reasonable. The chimneys I need to put in, though. Um, I'm going to switch back to my light blue for that. So let's just check in the height relative to this little turret. So it actually starts up about there. Comes down something like that. And then if I, it's a, I think it's a double chimney, but I'm just going to treat it as one for the moment. Comes down there. Okay. 
then you've got the roof line that's still not too bad and then this it's, it's a little more complicated here this structure so I want to kind of put that in but I don't want to get bogged down in too much detail but it comes all the way up to to there actually so it's higher than I had it so let's just pop a little bit of an outline in not too heavy come down there and then I'll put in a couple of the steps in this kind of end piece but without going into too much detail it's kind of a line there and then there's a window uh, actually no I'm going to leave the window for now but I do want to draw in a bit of this uh, end piece I don't know what you would call it really let's see if I can put that in so Okay, so there's that part of the building coming up there and then let's begin to put in some of the architectural bits other than the building so i've got i can put a little line there so the top line of that wall it kind of angles up to the left but again i quite like what's actually happened automatically with the watercolor so even though it's not uh, architecturally accurate I'm going to leave that bit as it is for the moment I'm also I'm just going to hint at the top of that section of the wall there I'm going to completely leave the rest I may even leave all of that blank and I don't want to do too much more there over here um, again I've got something going on which I've brushed in which isn't quite right and for the moment I'm going to leave that untouched as well So next I'm actually going to try using a brush that I haven't used before so uh, check this one out it's kind of a I don't know what you call it really it's flat but it's also comes to quite a point in in this plane um, so I've got some color left in the central well I'm going to pick up some more of the alizarin pretty much all that I've got left that I squeezed out of the tube earlier and then some of the ultramarine blue. Let's get a bit more of that alizarin. And then just a touch of the yellow. So that's going to be kind of a fairly dark purpley brown. And what I'm going to do is start to put that in where I see fairly dark shadows. And I'm hoping that the shape of this brush is going to help me didn't work too well there <laughs> so I may have to adjust a little bit my, my thinking of how to use this brush but um, I'm going to put in dark shadows you know where appropriate so for example that part of the roof and the dark section of that roof actually extends down here as well so I'm getting some weird sort of edge effects from this brush but I don't actually mind too much so that's kind of cool um, okay, so where else have we got dark shadows? There's probably a, a little bit more down there, but I'm going to leave that for the moment. Uh, there's certainly a line of shadow up under here. This part of the roof is darker, but not quite as dark as what I've got on my brush at the moment. So let's put in the line of shadow I mentioned earlier under the eave. And I managed to kind of keep that little bit of texture I don't know how well you can see it on camera that's running along just above that so that's kind of worked out okay bit of shadow under there there's definitely some dark shadow in between these two chimneys and then I can perhaps dry brush some down either side of that central part And for this particular colour, I'm going to, oh, no, perhaps I'll, I'll just put in a bit of dry brush there, actually. Oh, this brush is pretty cool for for dry brush, I've just discovered. Let's move that water bottle out of your way. So for the plant life, I'll put a bit of texture in on the right as well. All 
right, well now I've switched to uh, a smaller synthetic brush. It's still a round brush, um, like I was using earlier on in the painting. And I've just picked up what I thought was alizarin, but I think it might actually be some cadmium red. I just, yeah, it looks more like cadmium red. Um, but nevertheless, that'll be okay. We'll use some of that. We'll pop in a bit of the yellow. And let's use some of this on some of the darker but redder areas that we've got. So, for example, the part of the roof here. Now, where this turret comes down, as I marked out with my pen earlier, is actually a little part of the turret showing. So I can kind of block that in a little better. Um, I could probably use that on this side of the wall, but I like that initial wash so much that I'm not going to. Um, I'm actually going to go back to my larger brush because I feel there's, there's a slight danger of getting a little bit too fiddly with that small one. So I've just sort of weakened the wash a bit as well. So let's redden up this part of the roof. Bring in a bit there. And similarly with this part of the roof as well. And then I can use the same colour for this part of the wall over here. Uh, I'll get rid of that run in just a second. That's OK, I don't mind a little bit at the top, that's OK. And then the uh, same colour, but I'm going to put a bit more yellow in there, as you can see. Let's get a bit more of that red and let's make this part of the building a little more orange than I had it. There's also a patch of orange that could do with going up just there by the window. And then grabbing some of the Silurian blue, mixing it into that same orange colour. Um, a bit more of the blue, a bit more of the red. And then this isn't really quite the right colour, to be honest, but I'm still going to put it in just to see, see what it looks like. And in terms of tone, that's OK. So it, it could do with being more purple. And I might actually I might lift some of that off. So although I said I'd lift some of it off, I'm not quite I quite like the colour now, even though it's not representative of the colour on the building. I don't actually mind it. So I think what I'll do is I'm just going to use this little well, this brush I used earlier. It's not a small brush, but um, I'm just going to suggest some of the texture in that end of the building. I don't know how well that's going to lift off. It's not working reasonably well. Um, And I'll put a couple of perspective lines as well. And yes, so that's that's OK. On the whole, I'm quite happy with that so far. What I need to do now is just put in some dark areas within the foliage. So back to the same, well, same brush I had before, not back to it. Um, grabbing some of the ultramarine blue, which I need to get some more of. OK, so I just grabbed some more of the ultramarine blue and put it um, on the palette. So I'm just using the water that I've got uh, on the palette already. I've mixed up a darker green there. I'm just going to use this brush, which I used earlier, to kind of scumble in a little bit of the dark plants that we've got on the right there and then we'll put some of that same colour down in the shadow here and then as it's dying out on the brush put a little bit in the foreground as well. Could also do with a touch on the left hand side here as well but not quite so strong.
and I'm going to let that dry, I think. All right, well, I'm going to, you know, I've let the painting dry now. So I'm just going to fill in some of these chimneys in a little bit of a stronger colour. I've switched to a small flat brush. All the brushes I use are synthetic, by the way. Um, a little touch of the, well, I've got some of the yellow there, a little touch of the alizarin. So I'm just looking to get a fairly pale orange. Perhaps have a little bit more of that. Well, it's not the alizarin anymore, is it? I think it's cadmium red. I think we decided earlier. Um, so let's put uh, some of that chimney in. And that yellow is quite a useful colour, actually, um, for other areas. So I think I'm going to kind of sweep in a little bit there at the bottom of that tower. Not quite the right colour, but, you know, close enough for what I want to do. Put in a little bit here underneath the that roof. Block in over on this side of the chimney. And I'm going to continue that colour over the dry, darker wash that I put down before. And then really it's just a case of looking around to see if I can use that colour anywhere else. Um, and nowhere is particularly jumping out. I mean, I, I could use some of it on the wall here, but I quite like how pale that wall is. But what I probably can do is just kind of darken that area a little bit there. Um, Next up, I want to begin to tackle some of the windows. So with the same flat brush, I'm just picking up some of the Silurian blue. And I'm going to use this colour to just begin to indicate where some of these windows are. So let's just make sure I've got that uh, well mixed on the brush. So some of these windows I will end up darkening further, but as a first approximation. This colour should be a pretty good way to go. So I've got a, uh, a rectangular window here, then a an, some kind of an arched window. And then on this one here, we've got another rectangular window. Which could do with being a little bit taller than I've just done. And I've got three windows going along here. One, two, three. So let's put those in. And there's one down here, or one up here, I should say. Again, that could do with being a little bit taller. One on the next floor down. down here haven't placed those quite right but it should you know it should be okay and I'm just going to very lightly dry brush in this one and then there's one down there as well just peeking out over the top of the wall and then there's a little window here and then on this end piece there are some windows as well And really they could do with being lighter. I may come back in with some white acrylic in a, in a bit. And we'll, we'll see what the finished thing looks like. Now, while I've got that uh, Silurian on the go, I'm going to take some more of that. Perhaps got a little bit too much there, really. But again, should be okay. A little touch of the yellow, though, just to mix that into kind of a, a deep bluish green. I'm going to use that up here on this little turret thing. So I'm just going to put a line in there, there with a little gap, and then another one there, and then another one there. And then up on top, it's some kind of weather vane or something. I can't quite, I think that's what it must be. So I'm just going to put a little flick in there, a little touch with the corner of the brush. I need, need a bit more paint than I'm putting down. Um, and a little touch there. 
and then I'll, let's see if we can use that colour somewhere else in the foliage so I can dry brush in a little bit there not dry brush but just kind of flick in a little bit there a few touches there as well Next I've mixed in some of the cad red with the neutral with some neutral tint and then a little bit of the ultramarine blue as well and I've just mixed that over the top of the kind of greeny wash I had there before and I'm going to use this to see let's see how dark it is that's it's pretty good um, so I'm going to sweep some of this in here across the top of the window and we're going to start to put in a little bit of, of loose line work using the using the brush and also some deeper shadows as well so so pick out a couple of little details but if I just use the end of the brush it gives a nice kind of dotted line which isn't too harsh and this brush is pretty old so it's fairly frayed but that that can be a good thing now let's um, put some shadow in at the top of some of these little gaps I've left and I'm going to come back with the same color but with a different brush in a little bit to kind of enhance that such a shadow there And the shadow under this window could do with being even darker really not under the window sorry under the under the roof there same there and then in amongst this darker area that i've got i can deepen and darken part of the shadow A little bit of extra dry brush up there and there and perhaps just a little bit across there put a little touch of texture in the roof and then there's quite a dark shadow at the top of this window And then I can continue some of that shadow colour just by scumbling it in on top of some of the washes I've put down already. Next I'm going to try another brush that I've never used before, this little liner brush. So it carries you know, quite a bit of water up here but then it goes to a very fine point at the end. So carrying on with that same colour that I've got before I'm hoping that this will allow me to put in some you know some really nice fine lines. So let's see if it works. So I need a bit more paint. Yeah, that seems to be pretty good actually, so that's cool. Now I'm going to use this 
before the end of the building. So some of those lines I lifted out with a damp brush earlier, they are showing, but I need to kind of do a little more. And again, I don't want to get into, you know, a huge amount of detail, but. And really, I should have made those lines steeper than they are, but never mind. Back to my flat brush next, and I'm just coming in with pure ultramarine blue. Just want to put some deeper shadows in parts of these windows. And I think what I'm going to do is use this same brush, just mixing the blue in with some green to just that needs to be a little greener than I've made it. To just um, put a little bit of the foliage, which is kind of climbing up the, the side of the building in. Top of the wall there with some more foliage. growing around this wall. Let's get a bit more of that blue in the mixture to just darken it a little bit there as well. Back in with the pen next and let's uh, let's go to work on this turret here. I'm going to use the pen for little bits of shading here and there and just to make key areas kind of stand out a little more too. So once again, as I as I draw and work my way around the the painting, where I can, I'm going to use the effects which have been created automatically by the watercolor. But equally, I can kind of tidy up or strengthen key regions you know where I feel it's necessary so for example I can put a little bit of definition in on this window but without going into every single detail but I can just indicate that there are a couple of panes there and there's a sill underneath the window as well and then similarly if I come down here I can t tighten up that part of the building and the angle of the roof here. And then a little bit of refinement on this window.
Now I want to avoid having everything kind of penned in. So what I'm going to do is I quite like the way this is just suggested here in the middle. So I'm going to skip from this side of the building over to this side and then just put in a little bit more detail here and there on the left hand side. OK, so for example, um, the top of this chimney, I can I can refine. And there's some kind of little thing up the top there that I've indicated already. And There's you know, a few features in the stonework or the brickwork that we can just enhance a little bit. And then this roof is coming down here. And then, you know, I can make use of the line of this wash and just kind of put in a little bit of detail running across the top of that roof without going too crazy. And then we can kind of darken a few of the panes in this window. And then I need to deal with this uh, end here a little bit more carefully. So again, I don't want to get into sort of full architectural detail. So I just want to suggest it a bit better than I have before. So let's put in one, two, three, four steps in the end of the building. Then one, two, three little verticals. And just hint at it coming down there. Then there's some kind of rectangular piece here, so we'll put that in. And then this window I want to make a bit better defined, get some deeper shadow in there and refine the shape of that shadow as well. And then this end piece too, I want to kind of tidy that up. So let's let's do that. Just enough detail to make it clear that there's a window there. Now, at this stage, I'm pondering whether to leave, you know, all of this looseness and areas which are deliberately not defined or whether to work more into it. And typically that's an indication that I need to just leave it for at least for the moment. Um, so what I'm going to do next is I'm just I've just grabbed some of my interactive acrylic. And there are some areas where I just want to improve the highlights. So I've just got a little uh, rig of brush here, just dipping that straight into the tube. And I'm not I'm not going to include that pole that's going up vertically in the reference, but I am going to put a little flash of light on top of the the dome here. Um, I'm also going to put a little bit of light catching there. And so th so the thing you know the thing is you know obviously I haven't copied. In a, in a realistic way, my reference. So many of the colours are technically wrong, if you like, if you want to if you want to think of it that way. I haven't used the right colours. But it comes down to what do I think will work best for my painting. So, for example, yeah, this part here and here is, is way too pale. But I'm kind of loath to, to risk losing the freshness of of everything. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, for now, I'm just going to pop in some of this white down here. Can use some of that in there as well on the window. Uh, and then you know, I quite like 
this area, as I said before, even though it isn't quite right as such, I'm just going to put a little flash in there on the side of the this chimney. And then the, the main reason I wanted to use this white really was this area here. So I just want to, you know, I mean, I've barely suggested that end of the building really. So if you didn't know what was going on in the reference, I'm not sure you could tell from my painting, but you know, maybe that's okay. Um, and I can use the same paint to just flick in some little touches of light catching the verticals in that network of recesses that are on the left hand end of this building. That started to bring things to life a little more. And perhaps what I will do is because this run is just going kind of straight down here, it does kind of break up the painting in a way that I don't really want. So if I just come across there with the with the white. It's going to hopefully create more of a sense that there's some kind of barrier between this foliage and the house itself. But I'm not going to try and hide it completely. And while we've got the white on the brush, May as well put in a few little flower heads. Use these to break up that run that's going down vertically there. Again, we don't want too many, just, just enough to further describe the plants. So, yeah, so for now, I'm going to leave it like that. I think that's, I think that's done. Uh, so let's see if we can get this tape off. So when you work on watercolours you know, like this, taking the tape off really does kind of make you reassess the, how well the painting's gone. Because it creates that, look, oh yes, nothing, nothing new in what I'm saying, but obviously it just creates that little board, border along the, uh, the edge of the paper. Now that's going to be a little less obvious with this particular painting than with some because you know, I've kept things very soft along the bottom there. So some parts here, you know, the, the, no paint was put down at all. Whereas along the top of the painting, as you're seeing now, I'm getting this hard line. So there's a clear kind of framing of the picture. Whereas at the bottom, it kind of just gets, kind of merges into the paper, which again, I think is quite an interesting effect. So I'm going to have a, a hard line along the top as I've got there. And if I can actually get the tape off this left hand edge, there's going to be a hard edge to the left hand side of the painting. But um, the bottom on the right hand side, less so. So I think that makes for quite an interesting framing device as well. So here's a look at the finished painting in close up. Remember, as with all my videos, you can click on the link to the high resolution version uh, in the description below this video. And then you can zoom in and look at the brushwork in real detail if you want to. Uh, but either way, 
hope you really enjoyed my version of Landscape Artist of the Year. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe. And I hope to see you next Sunday for the next episode of The Sunday Art Show. Thanks very much for watching.